Awesome. Hi, everyone. Hi, Laura. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Rashika. Hi, Lakeisha. Awesome. We got some uh, great people here. Um, I will wait a few more seconds to let people roll in if they're able to attend live, uh, but we'll get started very shortly. And I just wanted to give a, a proper introduction to our, our guest today. You know what? Okay, we'll get. We'll go ahead. Hey, how's it going, Rachel? Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Um, so today for our Community uh, Business School guest webinar series, uh, we have Kendra Courtney. I don't really know that she needs any kind of introduction, but uh, she she is a workflow strategist, business consultant, and an absolute Dubsado veteran. So uh, today she's graced us with her presence and is going to share a few gems with uh, you all. So I'm hoping, and I definitely know this will be beneficial. So Kendra, thank you for uh, taking some time out of your evening. She's in Cape Town, so this is not this yeah. is post business hours. Uh, so I appreciate you making the time. Of course. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Um, I I can see everyone's comments. So if you have questions at the end, we can come back to that. But yeah, like Joey said, I'm Kendra and I'm in South Africa. So it's 7 p.m. now. So I know everyone's all over the world, but thank you for, for joining wherever, wherever you are. Um, so I'm going to start sharing my screen. And then if you can just let me know that you can actually see it. Awesome. I can see it. So <laughs> let me know if you guys can as well. Yeah, coming in clear for me. Okay, cool. So as the title suggests, we're going to be talking about um, how we can use Dubsado for group program applications and specifically, um, like I said, for your applications. So we're not going to be covering um, like the onboarding or offboarding or things like that. We're going to be looking at specifically applications because I know it is often something that we don't think about when we are wanting to, to add group programs to our offerings. So again, I'm Kendra and um, I've dedicated my business over the past four years. I've been working with Dipsada for the past four years in my own business. I started using it as a photographer. My husband and I were photographers for, for a few years and um, I was just fed up with all of the admin, all of the manual admin I had to do in my business. So I started looking for applications that could help me. And I found Dubsado and I started using it. And after a while, I was like, I can help other people in their business with Dubsado. So that's where I am now. Over the past few years, I've been doing this. Um, last year was the year where I started offering Dubsado setups exclusively. Um, I've had a VA a background in VA work as well. But really, since last year has been focused in on Dubsado. So I'm very excited to show you some of the um, cool features I've found working with Dubsado um, and specifically for, for um, group applications. Okay, cool. So like I said already, we're going to be covering applications, but I want to start by saying this is for any industry. Um, I know when you think of group programs, you think, oh, this must be for coaching or the coaching industry. But I found people have group programs in any industry, whether you're a photographer and you want to do education for other photographers, a group program is a great way of doing that, whether you do web design, any industry. So don't shut off if you aren't a coach or a consultant, this is for you as well. But before we actually start, I would love to know how many of you who are live, I know a few of you who aren't here may be offering group programs, but I'd love to know how many of you actually are, are either running them now or you plan on running them in the future. And I'll see in the, the comments and we can have a, a quick discussion. If any of you offer, if you don't, we'll just go on, but um, let's start there. Awesome. Okay, cool. So Rachel offers and Laura 
hopes to offer them in the future. Um, so what kind of programs do you guys want to run in the future? Laura, I know you also do some sort of setups. So you're probably doing something in that field. Um, but um, Rachel, what are you looking at at offering? Obviously, with surprise, you can just say, um, but it's always nice to know what kind of programs you guys are, are, are looking at offering. It can be super general, just like a topic or the kind of industry you're, you're hoping to serve. Awesome. Okay, cool. So coaching. Awesome. So, yeah. So, like I said, this isn't just for coaching, but obviously coaches will benefit from this. That's awesome, guys. Okay, cool. So... Before I start with the features and how you can use your applications, I want to address something. So I know people often say that Dubsado is for one-on-one -on -one services. You use it for if you run VIP days or if you have services with like one-to-one, -one, um, whether it's to another business or to another to a consumer. Um, and the answer is yes and no. Um, Dubsado is normally used for one-on-one -on -one projects and bookings, but what I like to say is each member in your program is a person individually, and when you um, take applications, when they need invoicing, when they need to pay for the program, when you may need an intake form filled out, they need to get that individually. Um, they're not going to be getting a group invoice or, or a group form to fill out. They need that themselves. So Dubsado can work for that because when you're using the workflows and the forms, individual people fill that out. Um, I hope that makes sense. So when you're sending out something, they fill it out. Um, so when they're looking to apply for your group program, sending them an application form will be individual. They'll fill it out. They'll, they will be applying for themselves and a project will be made in Dubsado for them. So you can totally use Dubsado for that because all of the parts where there'll be a group component won't happen in Dubsado. And I'm going to speak more about that um, in a second. And again, when you think of group programs, Dubsado may not be the first thing that comes to your mind because there's so many other programs um, that, that you think of when you want to run a group program. Like I have on here, there may be Zoom to host your group calls um, or maybe even something like Big Marker for um, for your for webinars to promote the group program or even your a Facebook group to um, encourage community um, once they're in the group program. You may be thinking about um, a course platform. So I know a lot of group programs have a component of education in them in terms of having a portal to have videos or PDFs or workbooks. So that's what you may be thinking about. Or Voxer. Um, I'm, if you're not familiar with Voxer, Voxer is a, um, a walkie-talkie app where you can talk to people in real time and they can reply to you in real time. So it's great for back and forth um, with yourself and um, the people in your group program. But, um, and I want to speak a bit about how Dubsolo can actually be used with all of these. So if you are going to be using Zoom in your group program, and I know this is a bit far from applications, but before we move on, I wanna tell you that um, you can use Zoom in Dubsado by creating one link for all of the group calls that you're gonna be having and pasting that link in the canned emails that will go out to each member when you email them. Um, the same for the Facebook group, those links will be the same. So you can go and copy and paste that link in an email and send it out. Um, you can use Dubsado to send out um, like reminder emails when um, you're going to have your group calls. So um, if the group calls um, may, if you're going to go live in your group, you can have the link there. And then for the for course for the for, sorry for the course platform, what you can do for that is you can use a third party app called Zapier. And what Zapier allows you to do is it allows you to integrate Dubsado with another app. And I recently did this for a client. Um, she's going to be running a, a group coaching program. And when someone pays for the group coaching program, they will automatically be zapped into um, Member Vault, which is the course platform she uses. Because she's planning on having 
workbooks um, and videos for them to watch throughout the program. So you don't have to go and manually copy and paste their info in. You can just have them pay and they'll be zapped over. You don't have to think about it. That's the power of automation. And then with Voxer, Voxer has a link. So um, you can just say to the group member, um, you can you can contact me on Voxer. Here's my link. You can make it a button if you like, and they can um, add you to their Voxer and contact you like that. So like I say, all of these are important with your group programs. And now you have some tips on how you can integrate these apps with Dipsado. But something that we often don't think about is the application process. What happens before they even go into um, your, your course platform? What happens when they need to apply and the vetting process? Because you need to make sure that the right people are joining your program. Before I go on, I just want to check at their no issues that you guys can hear me you can still see my screen okay i'm not seeing any comments that you can't so i'm gonna keep going awesome okay cool so specifically today we're going to be looking at applications so more specifically we're going to be looking at using a lead capture form and workflows very basically to make it all streamlined for you so you can focus on creating the group content firstly, because that takes a lot of time. And then also marketing the program, which is a big part of making your program successful. You don't want to be, um, you know, being too closely involved in taking applications, sending out emails when there are systems that can do it for you. And this is what I want to show you today. So the first thing that we're going to look at to automate this to make this a little bit easier for you is we're going to be looking at the lead capture form and if you've done any of the Dipsodo courses if you've watched youtube videos you will know what this is it's basically a contact form with superpowers that's what i like to call it um, and it's in your Dipsodo account it's one of the form types so you get the contract subcontracts um questions proposals and the lead capture form um, and it's basically a form that you can create that can either be embedded on your website or the link can be sent on social media in an email wherever you like it to be um, and what's really awesome about this is that when they complete the form um, they are automatically added to Dubsado and when I joined Dubsado this was actually big for me I was like whoa um, I don't have to go and retype the information that people give on a form because um, I think we sometimes don't realize um, the little automation that has big effects in our life so we all want some more automation but having a form that adds someone to a an account to a program is big so if you're looking at adding automation and this is your first step you have some automation in your business so don't ever think that you need like these elaborate workflows at first if you set this up you're already saving time you're not going and copying and pasting the names and the emails into the system you're saving time so if you'd have this awesome you can only add more automation from here so for these for this purpose the lead capture is going to be your application form that when someone lands on your landing page um, or an email that you send out about your group program, this is the first thing they'll see, obviously amongst a beautifully designed landing page if you, if you want to do that. Um, you can embed this and um, you can design this form as you like. You can use Canva graphics, you can use some code if you like to use your fonts and things like that. But if you want, you can use the form as is. Um, you can change the font of um, the fields and we'll go into the and i'll walk you around how to do that but this right here is going to be the form you're going to use to add so much automation to your life so the lead capture form is awesome as a whole but one really cool feature that i want to speak about mostly is the workflow element that you can see over here and how it works is, is that you can set out a set of questions that the lead can choose from. And depending on what they choose, a workflow can be triggered. And 
you can do whatever you want with workflows. You can have emails go out. You can have schedulers go out. Um, you can tag them, change the project status. Really anything you want, you define your workflows. Um, and this is why I love this, this feature so much because you can really do what you like with it. And I'm gonna show you a real life example um, with that and how you can use it for your applications. And I'm gonna speak to you about some other questions you can ask to really make your, your applications effective. But we're gonna use this feature to add automation and you're gonna see how cool it is. So let's start with this example. So every group program has a certain audience. You should have an audience that you're trying to attract with your group program, that you're trying to solve a problem for them. So let's use the example of being at a certain stage in business. You can use different ones. You can say whether they're in a certain income category and you're a coach trying to help people go from 5K months to 10K months and beyond. Um, if that's your group program, then this um, that is a good category for you. But if you're using income, um, income category, the industry, so if you're specifically working with web designers or photographers, this is a great way for you or business stage um, for, for your group program. So you can see that there are three options that I've given here. Um, and I'm going to go to the next slide and show you a bit more detail on, on all of these. So you can see we have three options. And again, I'm going to go into the Psado a bit later to show you how to set this up but we were looking at three categories here. And if you have any questions as well, put them in the comments and I'll come back to them later because I want to stay focused on the slides, not going back and forth. So the first category that they can choose is I'm just getting started. And you can put some more info in a bracket and say less than one year. So if they choose this, okay, and you'll see I have a target audience here. So you can see where, um, where the perfect people are for your group program. So the first option is if they select this, you would create a workflow that will send them an automated email. So the step would be um, send email immediately after the workflow has started, letting them know that the program may be a little bit too advanced for them. Because um, if they're just getting started, obviously your target is people within two to five years of starting their business. If they're less than a year, they're probably not a good fit for your program in this case. But you don't want to leave it there because while they may be starting their business in a year, two, two years, they could be a good fit for your group program. And you don't want them to forget about you or have a bad experience with you and never hear from you again after that automated email. So what you could do is you could put in that email some other recommendations for them because um, you may have a product or a course or a one-on-one -on -one offer that could allow you to work with them in a different capacity because you obviously want to try and get some sort of sale if obviously what you offer them is relevant. You don't want to just say we're not a good fit and leave them there. You want to obviously try and make a sale from them because um, they've reached out to you because they like you, they like your offers. So you don't want to get rid of them. Um, but if what you know, if you really have nothing else, if your group program is your signature offer, it's the only thing you offer, which is which is fine as well, you may find it better to go and send them to someone else. So if you know of another of another business offering something that they could need, send them to them. Put a link in an email and send them there. If you want, you can go even beyond and like a month later or whatever you want, send them another email saying, hey, um, I know you want a good fit for my program, but have you had a chance to look at these other links I've given you? So what I want you to take away from this is that don't ever just tell people you're not a good fit and leave them there. You can use the sort and the emails and the features to help them find something that will be good for them. But then let's look at your target audience. These are the people who, as far as you know, will be the perfect match for your group. So always have one of these options in mind that this is the perfect option for you. 
So because they seem like the best fit, you probably want to either get on a call with them if you're going to do calls. I always recommend doing calls for um, people where you're going to be working with them, um, mostly in a one-on-one -on -one capacity. But um, if it's a smaller um, group program, it may be beneficial to have a call with them just to make sure they are a good fit for your program. Otherwise, if you are um, wanting to have them book immediately and sign up immediately, you don't have to send them a scheduler, send them a proposal with the package in the proposal for them to just book it, um, sign an agreement if you're having an agreement, and then make the first payment or pay for the, for the program in full. But if you like to have a bit more, um, if you like to reply to them a bit more personally, and what I like to do is I like to send an, an automated email um, that says, I've received your application, I will be in touch within the next 48 hours. And in this way, you can go over and reread the application and reply to the email with a bit more specific. So if they share something with you that um, is very personal, you can go back and refer to that in the email. But all of those options will give you some automation because if you want them to book a call, you're not going back and forth to them on, are you available on this date or on that date? they can just book a time on your schedule that you've predetermined times that you're available. Um, if you want them to book immediately, you don't have to go say, oh, here's the link in another email. You can just send it to them automatically. It's all about saving some time. So that is how you can add automation for these two. And then for the last one, what that workflow may look like will probably be a bit different than the other two because this person may or may not be a good fit for your program because while they may be in business for five plus years, if they're reaching out to you, your messaging, your branding, what you're offering is obviously speaking to them and they may feel that they're feeling a bit behind in their business. Maybe they've had something happen or in their life or that they want you to help them with. So if they select this, you don't want to automatically say you're not a good fit for this. You may want to either have them book some time in with you to chat over a 15 minute call. It doesn't have to be a long call or even just saying to them, you know, um, you may be a good fit, um, but where you, you are at in business generally, it's not who I work with, but let's book some time in. Or you can do this via email if you're taking fewer people so you're not expecting as many applications. So you can see how wherever these people are in your in your, taking your application form, you can add automation, whether it's sending a scheduler or sending a booking form right away for them to book. So if you want to have more automation in your applications, use the workflow feature. It's a really great feature. And I'm going to go through some more questions you can use, and then we're going to hop into the um, into the Psodo and show you how to actually set this up. But I'm just going to go back to the comments. OK, cool. We're fine. So long. I'm just going to have some water quickly as well. OK, cool. So obviously, this question that I just spoke about isn't the only question you can ask on your application form. Um, there are a few other questions that are helpful to ask, but I always say that the simpler the form, the better, because you don't want to have a page, um, like a full page of questions for someone to fill out, because that could be intimidating and cause them to not apply in the first place. Um, so you want it to be a good balance between the questions you need them to answer versus you know, them pulling out questions for the sake of ans answering questions. So you need to think about what do I absolutely need to ask? And then also what you need to ask to make sure that this person is the best for your program, because there's nothing worse than having someone invest in your program. And then you realize, or they realize even worse, <laughs> is that they are actually made the wrong investment and you know you have a no refund policy and it's just a mess you know you want them to have the best experience and you want to have the best experience as a business owner as well so 
the way that you ask questions, the way that you phrase things on your application can really help with this. And obviously, it definitely comes down to the person buying it, to do their research, um, that what you're offering is for them. You obviously can't um, hold their hands through the entire process. They need to read, they need to ask you questions because uh, you can't know everything up front. You know, everyone is different. Um, but you can guide them into what you need um, and what they may need. So this is a good question that I like, I like to ask. Um, and this, again, any industry. It doesn't have to be the coaching industry. What you can ask is what practical outcomes will you experience or do you want to experience after taking this program? Um, in other words, what do you want out of this program? That may be a bit harsh to, to just ask on the form, but asking them, what do you want out of it? You know, um, what do you see your future looking like after taking this? Or what do you think your future will look like? Obviously, that will differ person to person. But generally, what are they wanting out of this program? And this is a great way to see in their own words what they think this program is. And in terms of actually setting that up, it would be the free response block. So they have a lot of space to write. And they can literally just say what they what they think they're getting out of this course and again it's a great way to to see that what their understanding is and then you can also see what responses you're getting so if you're seeing that the majority of people are getting it wrong then you may need to go and relook at your messaging and what you're putting out there so if you're being too vague in your messaging in your in your marketing then they may be confused as well. So if you're finding it happening with the majority of the applications, obviously one or two may be a bad fit and they will just say they're not, they're not, they're not getting what your program is about. But it's a great way to see what they think. You can always go back to the drawing board and see, okay, where can I make it clearer for what this group is, who this is for, what they'll get out of the program as well. And here's a, a quick um, example. So say you're offering a small group program on how to plan small small weddings, so like intimate elopements, right, how to plan those. And you get someone who writes on your application form that they are looking on how to plan weddings in general. So they're looking for a beginner um, group program where they will learn how to plan weddings in general they may not get the best out of your program as if they haven't already um, taken a general course, because obviously you need to start with the big picture and then you go small. So they would need to go and do a general wedding planning group program or course or go um, study that before they come and learn how to do the smaller weddings. Um, and if someone obviously says on the on the on the application, oh, I'm, I'm really looking at learning how to plan small weddings specifically, then you can get back to them and say, you know what, this will probably be a bit too detailed for you. You need to go somewhere else and learn somewhere else. Again, giving them links on where they can learn that or where they can get that education. But again, it's all about guiding the, your applicant through um, knowing what you're doing, what the group program will look like before they even get time to chat to you. So you're saving time and they're saving time. And all this is to say, and on the next slide, I'm gonna show you some more questions you could potentially ask, but this is to say that money, so whether someone can afford your group program, it shouldn't be the only qualifying factor. Just because someone could afford your group program, that doesn't mean that that's necessarily what they need. And again, it could be horrible if someone invests in your program and it's not what they need. Um, so you should always ask more questions because it's first, firstly, and one of the questions should be, can you, can you afford the program? Because that is very important. Um, but secondly, is this right for them? Um, and I think that these questions will actually, will actually help you with this. So 
I know this is a very big slide and there are lots of questions on this, so you can always come back onto the replay and get these questions, but I just want to go through these questions as well before we go into Dubsado and I show you guys around how to actually set this up. So these are some questions that you can include in your lead capture slash application. So you always need, and when you create a new form in Dubsado, it will automatically have first name, last name, um, and the email address. Um, I think it also includes the phone number, but it will always ask you to have the first name, last name, and email address. And I'm sorry, my neighbors have decided to move tonight. <laughs> So you may be hearing a truck outside, but hopefully the mic has cut out most of that noise. Um, but yeah, working from home is what we get, right? So you get first name, last name, and email address. And I think Dipsado has been very smart in making these required because I'm going to tell you a quick horror story. When I first used Dipsado, I um, had a first name, um, last name, and an email address field, but I didn't make it required. And a wedding lead that I had, like I said, when I was a photographer, they completed the, the lead capture form, but they didn't put in their email address. And at this time, Dubsado didn't make it a required field yet. Um, so I had no way of contacting them. I didn't have their phone number, their email address or anything. So I essentially lost the lead. I think they may have come back to me a few days later when I didn't respond to them. But I was very lucky in that case because... Most people, when they're looking to hire, they contact a few places. And you, if you just don't get back to them, then they move on. So very good that Dubsado lets you, well, makes you have these fields now so you don't miss anything. Then if you know you are going to be collecting phone numbers, it may not be needed. Like in my case, I don't necessarily phone people being in South Africa, so I don't need the phone number. Um, website could be a great one, especially if you need more information on a business. If you're obviously going to be doing a group, group program um, with families or individuals, you won't really need a website because they probably won't have one. Um, but I like in my situation, I like getting the website just to get a feel of the business. Sorry. Um, and then what do you do? So if you are working with people who are in a specific um, field or um, what they do with their lives day to day this could be a great question but obviously if it's not relevant you don't have to use it then another question I like asking is what has led you to this point to reach out for support and why this question is great is because you can find out what they did before and didn't work um, because if they say to you oh I've gone through 10 group programs you can come back and say well do you think a group another group program will be great have you explored one-on-one -on -one work um, which may be better for you like if you've tried so many good programs this may not be great because this way you can get some great context around where they're at um, what they've done before and this will also help to see if what you offer is a good idea then here's my question I've been speaking about what practical outcomes will you experience or want to experience from taking this program and again for all the reasons I said before it's a great way to hear in their own words whether or not the program will be great for them and then I also like asking this so is there anything else that they would like to know or I should know um, um, before or while reading the application and you'll see most of the others are required but this one this one wouldn't be required because it's a if it needs to happen um, or if they have the a question or comment they can put it there and then I have an optional note that says if you um, want to have the price be a concern at this point then you can say the program starts at x amount um, please only complete the form if you are in a place to invest that and this could be a checkbox where they check it and say um, yes I'm I'm ready um, I've looked over the price and I can afford it. Um, or I've seen some people include that they need a payment plan. So there would be three, blo three blocks that would say, um, yes, I, I am ready, um, paying for, um, no, I need a payment plan. And then you may want to put a block that says no, because even though it says don't complete this form if you can't invest, you will inevitably get people who will fill it out who can't. So it's just to have that option there for them. Then 
um, if you have any other relevant questions um, that you feel that is relevant, you can ask them. So um, questions like, are you comfortable with learning um, and sharing in an environment with X amount of people? So um, if this person's filling it out with the expectation that it's a one-on-one -on -one program or um, a very small group where they're going to be like unlimited amount of people in the group, you may want to make sure that they're comfortable with that. Um, but if you want, you can leave that off and then that can be addressed on the sales page or even on a call. And then again, how long have they been in business? Um, what do they make in a month? So if your coaching is very um, numbers based, um, um, but then just as long as you keep it relevant. Um, at this point, you don't really need to know um, a lot of information about them. You can always send out another form later on with some more intake questions. Like if you want to send them a gift on their birthday and things like that, um, that's best asked once they've signed on. Um, some people aren't comfortable with giving out that information until they know you better or they're actually going to be working with you. So these are a few questions to think about that you can include that I found have worked with group program applications. Um, you can use all of them. You can use you don't have to use all of them, um, but they're just some great ones that I found that work. I'm going to go back into the chat. OK, cool. So now I'm going to go into Dipsado and show you how you would set up some of these questions. Give me a second to get it up. Okay, cool. I think we are in the solo now. Okay, cool. So I went ahead and I've just created a um, questionnaire already well, a lead capture form already. And you can see as I've made this, let me make this just full screen. Okay, that should be good. So as I've made this, you can see that there's the first name, last name and email. Um, and then obviously you can go in and delete any of the other relevant, uh, irrelevant fields. But this is what I was speaking about with the workflow. So you can go over here and drag over the workflows. And you can go in and type in anything you like. So um, you can type in what stage of business are you in, create it all, and select the workflows. So you would obviously need to go and make the workflows before you would come into this form or make the form, um, save the form, and then go and make the workflows. But it will probably be a lot easier for you to go and make them and then connect them. So I'm not gonna show you how you would make all of those workflows for the different phases, but you would pretty much come in here, add workflow, name it. So let's just say test. And then um, say the first step is the scheduler. You would come in and select send scheduler. You would have to make the scheduler template before. Um, you would make the canned email before as well. But this is where you would make the workflows. And then obviously you would make the canned emails here um, and the schedules that connect to the workflows. But this is pretty much where you would make it. And then you can come in here, save, refresh, just so the system knows that you've made something new. Come in here, um, apply the workflow for each phase. So you can name them and do that. And then add in any of your other forms and fields that you would like. So if you have the what... Um, what would you like to get out of the course or the, the group program? You would add this free response, add in your question, make it required um, so they can fill that out. Then if you want more of a checkbox, you can come in here and add the checkbox. Um, if you're looking at doing the investment question, add in the question, add in yes, no, I need a payment plan, make it required as well. But if you aren't going to be going um, via the workflow route based on what phase they're in or the questions that you want to ask, you can add one overarching um, workflow to this form. So once they filled out the form, it will trigger a workflow. Um, so if you're not doing it based on what they ask or what they answer, 
you can just make a general workflow that sends them an automated email that says, I've received your application, I get back to you. Or if all applications you're sending a scheduler, you can have this workflow automatically send them the scheduler or the proposal to book. That's up to you. What's also great is that you can redirect them to a thank you page. So once they've applied, you can send them to a page on your website that says, thank you for applying. Um, and then it will be on your website. It'll be beautiful. It will be branded. Um, so you would make it on your website. Just make the URL say thank you um, or um, group program. Thank you. However you like it to say. And then you can um, put the link here as well. Um, the last thing I want to show you on this is how you can also make the form no longer be allowed to be completed after you're done taking applications. So obviously, all group programs have a date where the application process ends before you start. And if you don't want to accidentally forget to take it down on your website um, after that date has ended, you can come in here and make it um, expire on a fixed date. So say you're taking applications up until the middle of October, you can come in here and say applications end on the 15th. Um, let's just say midnight. Um, and then um, I'm just going to save this template, get the link and then show you actually that won't show the ex expiry. So let me make it for today. I'm going to say 6 p.m. my time, so then it actually shows that, that it's expired. Get the link, and again, this is where you can get the link to either embed it on your lead, on your on your um, landing page or sales page, or send the link. Um, and then you can see that it's going to say that it has expired. And then it will not have any submit buttons at the bottom, so you don't have to worry about getting applications when it's too late. Um, it's kind of a sneaky workaround to not to have applications been taken anymore, um, but it's a way in case you forget. But if you um, set a reminder to do it, you can always come in, take it down or add a text block at the top that says um, applications are closed, um, join a waiting list and put the link for the waiting list if you want to do it that way. But this is a great way um, in case you forget to go and change that. Awesome. Let me go and check in again with you guys. Okay, cool. Do you guys have any questions so far? I've got a few more things to say, but if you have any, any questions so far, we can start that now. And if you're watching the replay, um, I'm not sure if I can see the comments later, but um, if you're in the Dipsodo group, there is there was a, a post about this. So if you go into the group and you see that post, you're welcome to put comments in there. After this, I will go and turn on the post notifications for that. So if you have any questions from this, you don't have to come to this video. You can just go into the group and ask there and I'll see any questions there after you've um, watched this as well, just to make it a bit easier for you guys. Okay, cool. Let's get back to the slides. Okay, cool. The last few things I want to say is that when I've been setting up a few group programs for people, I found that um, there are some things that you need to have prepared before you even come to Dipsada because um, Dipsada works on having all the pieces together. So um, your canned emails, your, um, your forms, etc. But a lot of the time, if you don't have these few things that I'm going to talk about, it's difficult to make the content for that. So I found that these are some things that you need to know. So you need to know the length and the cost of your group program. Um, so you'll need to know how long it's going to last for, um, how long the application process will be open for. Um, and then also, will you have payment plans that are an option? And the reason why you need to know and when it's going to, how long it's going to last for is because when you're emailing about um, like 
um, reminders of when the calls are through Dipsado, um, you'll need to know that for the canned emails. Because when you write in the canned emails, you want to be specific and say, our group call is tomorrow or our first one is tomorrow at least. And you won't know that unless you've determined when you start and end. And then also for the payment plans, when you go and make the proposals, which will almost be your order form or your sign up form, if you don't give them that option yet because you haven't decided it'll be a bit difficult for them to sign on um, with as many options as you can give them um, and then the second thing is to know how many people you'll be accepting because obviously when you hit a certain limit you need to start taking the application form off um, and if you don't know when that point is you're just going to keep getting people um, until um, you start so you need to determine that as well and then lastly you also need to know what resources you're going to provide um, and also where those resources will live. Um, you can totally use the Dubsado um, client portal to house um, some of the PDFs and workbooks, but it'll probably be a lot easier to house it in a separate platform like Member Vault or Podia, which, uh, which, which is what I use. I use Podia um, for them and zap them to it, like I spoke about earlier, zapping them once they've paid for the program. Just because if you use the client portal, um, the workflow will just determine when things go into the portal. Um, so if you have a workbook, you'd have to add it as a form um, to the portal. And this could be automated, but there'll just be a lot of pieces. So it may be easier to just have a central point for them to go and access that. Um, so yeah, so these are a few things to think about. Um, obviously the price is important. Um, and then also think about who you want in your program, um, which is the whole point of my training. Think about who you want in your program and communicating that while on your application form. So people know that the program is or isn't for them. So I hope this has been helpful, um, just with the basics of applications, what including it. Um, I would have loved to go into like the more onboarding and workflows, but we obviously don't have a lot of time for that. Um, so hopefully I can come back sometime and do a part two to this as well. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for having me. And um, if you guys want to connect, connect with me on um, Instagram. And that's where I am most of the time because I'd love to follow you and see all of your group programs and you're taking applications. Um, so I'd love to, to see all of that with you guys too. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kendra, for uh, being so gracious with your time, dropping a few gems for us. So thank you. I appreciate it. Of course. And if you guys have any questions, go and um, ask in the group and I'll be there as well. Yes, absolutely. Well, I hope you enjoy uh, the rest of your evening and I'm sure a lot of people will, will take some good benefit from this. So thank you again, Kendra. It's a pleasure. Thanks, Joey. Bye now. Bye, everyone.